told me, he said, somebody's calling Venetia. He said, I think you know her. And I was like, I don't think so. I don't know her. <laughs> and, and people call me all the time, and usually they'll say they know me. And often it's someone who's heard me speak one time, and, and they come up to me after the program and shake my hand, and then they'll say, well, don't you remember me? And I'll say, well, I talked about 250,000 people a year. No offense, I really don't remember you. But the greatest compliment I can have is when there's someone who heard me speak many, many years ago who remembers me and then asked for me to come back. And so I just wanted to publicly, Vanessa, tell you thank you. Because I made my day. I was just really, really good. And, and I tell you, I've been getting pumped since I've been here. Because in the first school we went to, there was a teacher there, I think it was, who came. And beautiful, tall young lady. And she said that she heard me speak. And I inspired her and wanted, made her want to go do something in school and that kind of thing. And you know what? I appreciate that. So with that said, let's do some work. We got some work to do. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Milton Cree. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I grew up in Chicago, but I spend most of my time now going around the country, talking to kids, talking to parents, talking to pro ball players, really talking to anybody who will listen primarily about the issue of drugs and violence in America. However, tonight, I'm not going to talk to you about that. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about something else that I think we got a real problem with. Hope you don't mind. This isn't a formal talk because I've been feeling right at home here. Brother Isaiah made me feel at home. <laughs> Sister, Sister Ward back in the back made me feel right at home. Uh, me and Benidra, we've been right at home. She sent her mama to get me. When somebody sent her mama to get you, you know you at home. And then, then, they, then mama fed me. And then the brother in the back keeps making me think of one of my old-time heroes, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. I don't know why. Yeah, it's you. You reminded me of Adam. No, it's you. It's you. Because <laughs> you all, some of you may not remember Adam Clayton Powell. Adam Clayton Powell of Absinthean Baptist Church in Harlem, New York. Absinthe, that was a man who made me many years ago want to become a speaker. Mm -hmm. And he had this, this, this famous talk called Keep the Faith Baby. Mm -hmm. And Adam Clayton Powell, not only was he a powerful speaker and a politician and a pastor, but he was also the coolest brother mm -hmm. I thought I'd ever seen when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. 
because I saw him on, I'm telling you, you look like Adam Clay Powell, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. And so I just want to give you all your props. Adam Clay Powell's on the cover of Ebony Magazine, and you young folk don't remember this, but some of y'all my age and older do. So you, you may remember this. You look young, but you about my age. You are young. You may not remember. You my, you my age and a little older. So don't act like you don't know. Now, you remember years ago, and I'm telling the truth. Do you remember when Adam Clayton Powell was on the cover of Ebony Magazine, standing on his boat, and he had a little cap in his hat. He was holding like that right there. Do you remember that picture? Adam Clayton Powell, coolest man I ever seen. In my life. And so that brother back there, you dressed like Adam Clayton Powell too, brother. Are you related to the, to the Reverend? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, I've, heard, I've heard that before. I know you have. You look like Adam Clayton Powell. I, I've been peeking over here for a minute. Seriously, Adam Clayton Powell was the man who made me want to be a speaker one day because of the impact he had on people. And when I saw you and you looked so much like him, I got to tell you, you inspired me, brother. And I just thank you for being here. I really, really do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want to talk to you about tonight. We're in trouble. We're in trouble with our kids. And a lot of times when we talk about our kids, people think the trouble is gang banging. People think the trouble is drugs. Wrong. Those are problems. Those are issues. Yes, we need to address them. But there's some other things going on that we got to start taking a look at real seriously. You know, as I've been going around talking to kids around this country, one of the things that blows my mind is how much trouble we're in with this thing called work and this thing called work ethic. Yeah, you know, I picked up a new client last year. Picked up a new client called the United States Olympic Boxing Team. Dan Campbell, who's from up this way, is a U.S. Olympic boxing coach. And Coach Campbell called me, wanted me to come out to Colorado Springs before the Olympics talk to his boxers. And I went out there. And you got to understand something. I'm a big boxing fan. Don't know about y'all. I'm a big boxing fan. And when I got out there, you know what blew my mind? You know what they want me to come out there and do? You know what they want me to come out there for? Because here you had guys who were on the U.S. Olympic boxing team. They weren't trying to make the team. They were on the team. They, they weren't still going through tournaments. They were on the team. And here's the problem they had. Coach said he had some of the best young boxers he had in many, many years. But the problem was, they were lazy. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to do the extra work. Didn't want to go the extra mile. Now, what blew me away about that, and the part maybe you ought to understand, if you're on the U.S. Olympic boxing team, and Emma, if you go to the Olympics and you win a gold medal, when you come back to the U.S., you're going to get offered minimum a $2 to $3 million signing bonus just to sign to go pro. Mm -hmm. If you win a silver medal, you're going to get at least a million and a half to go pro. If you win a bronze, you're going to get at least a million to go pro. If you don't win nothing, you just go up there and get beat up. Mm. But if you're on the Olympic team, you're going to get at least half a million when you come back to sign to go pro. Mm -hmm. And these cats with that kind of money at stake weren't taking it seriously and weren't putting their work in and weren't putting the effort in. And I don't know, because I'm an old athlete from years gone by. I don't know about y'all. But if somebody told me if I go to the Olympics, not a made the team, <laughs> if I go to the Olympics and if I could just make it through three matches, I'm going to get between three and a half and five million dollars. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be busting my butt every day trying to make that. I'm 51 years old. I try to go and train them in and see if they take it. The, the point being, I'm willing to bet you some of you feel the same way. For that kind of money, how many of y'all would have got in shape? All right, we got sisters raising their hands, <laughs> and they only let women box still. Now. But for that kind of money, you'd have tried to do it. All right, you retired, you'd have come out of retirement, wouldn't you? But these guys weren't doing it. All of a sudden, I'm saying to myself, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And then it tied into something. I think that what happened is Coach Campbell read a book I wrote. I wrote a book called "Nobody Wants Your Child," and I wrote that book. And I hate the title, just like some of you do. I wrote that book because I started running into so many people in corporate America who were calling me in to work with their young people. And I would tell them, I don't, I don't work with corporations anymore, I work with kids now. And they said, that's why we want you. I said, what do you mean? They said, Mill, we're having a problem with our young people. And I said, what do you mean? Give an example, one of my clients called me in. They had a problem. They had two young men they had to terminate. These two young men happened to be black. These two young men happened to be college educated, happened to be in their mid-twenties. These two young men got fired. And then I'm asking myself whether they get fired for what was the problem? Because I'm thinking maybe it was some racism stuff. Maybe it was some real diversity issues. And so what's going on? These two young men got fired because they kept coming to work calling each other the N-word. And the company said, you know what, you can't use that word around here. You got to stop using that word around here. One young man says to his boss, that's my boy. He knows I mean nothing by it. That's how we talk to each other. We don't mean nothing by it. That's my boy. Corporation said, we don't care. Right. This is our property. On our property, you can't use that language here. 
Then they made them sign a little piece of paper. You know the one written by the attorneys. Mm -hmm. That one that says, if you continue this behavior, you're subject to further disciplinary proceedings up to and including termination. Mm -hmm. Now, basically, that's the letter they make you sign when they know they may have to fire you so you can't go get a lawyer and sue them right. afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, these two young brothers, they signed that document, and about two months later, they overheard in the break room calling each other the N-word. Having a good old time laughing, calling each other the N-word. Those two young men got terminated. And then the company called me and wanted me to come in and do a workshop. Basically to tell folk, please don't call each other the N-word. Now, these folk paid me $8,500 a day to come in and do a workshop to tell folk don't use the N-word. Mm. How many of y'all think that's just a little bit ridiculous? <laughs> that you have to pay somebody to tell grown folk not to call each other the N-word at work? Yeah. But how many of y'all know I did go get that paper? <laughs> yeah, I did. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and I told, I remember I went home, I told one of my boys, I said, Rick, I'll never get another gig like that, I said, but it was cool. Would you believe about three months later I got a call from another company? Ooh. This company's in Alabama, they heard what I did for the company in Mississippi and said, Milk, we need you. I said, what's up? I said, is it the N-word? They said, no, it's different this time. They just terminated three young ladies, two white, one black. Terminated them because these, two, these three sisters kept coming to work calling each other the B-word. And so the company terminated them. But before they terminated them, this is a real good company. Before they terminated them, you know what they did? They brought in the highest ranking woman in the company to talk to them. Highest ranking woman in the company, 57, 58 year old, black female, PhD, grandma, Executive Vice President. They brought her in, she sat down and talked to these three young ladies. 22 year old white female says this, 58 year old black grandmama, PhD, Executive Vice President. 22 year old white female says to her, I know you're kind of old school. Mm. And we're kind of new school, and you got to understand that we didn't really mean anything by that word. That's just kind of, those are my girls, that's kind of how we talk to each other, and we didn't mean anything by it. It's kind of like on Sex in the City. Haven't you ever oh, seen Sex in the City? Yeah. They referenced a TV show mm. talking to a 58-year-old PhD mm. black grandmama executive vice president. Now, how many of y'all know that didn't go over real well with that sister? <laughs> All right. Well, long story short, ladies and gentlemen, those three young ladies got terminated. The company brought me in, wanted me to write a workshop teaching managers how to talk to folk about the N-word and the B-word. And they brought me in for five days at $8,500 a day to tell folk, please don't use the B-word or the N-word, and here's how you talk to folk about it. Now, how many of y'all think that's ridiculous? <laughs> but how many of y'all know I did go get that <laughs>